Hello students, I am Dattatreya discussing uh, digestion and absorption uh, now zoology for meat right. So in fun first part what we discussed is alimentary canal and uh, the digestive glands and histology of gut. Now let us see what are the various digestive juices. First, uh, what is meant by digestion? So, digestion is a mechanical and chemical breakdown. So, what is a mechanical breakdown? By teeth and muscles action, there is a breakdown which can be called mechanical breakdown. Whereas by enzymatic action, there is a chemical breakdown, right? So like that, there are two types of breakdown. Now, various digestive enzymes help us in the process of digestion. Saliva contains a tylen. What is tylen? It is nothing but salivary amylase, helping in digestion of polysaccharides. Remember, polysaccharides can be digested by amylase, which is present in saliva and pancreatic juice. And antibacterial enzyme called lysozyme, and uh, of course, uh, antibodies uh, IgA can be also seen. Now, see, gastric juice. What are the components of gastric juice? HCl, pepsinogen, proreneum, gastric lipase, uh, mucus. Casel's intrinsic factor that help in absorption of B12, which is very, very important for normal functioning of nervous system and maturation of RBC, right? But gastric juice is acidic, pH will be highly acidic, less than 2. Then pancreatic juice, second largest gland in the body, which contains protein digesting enzymes like trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase. These are the three protein digesting. Next, carbohydrate digested by amylase. Then lipids are digested by lipase. Then nucleases, nucleic acid digesting enzymes are called nucleases. That is DNAs and RNAs. Next, intestinal juice contains enterokinase, which is activating trypsinogen to trypsin. Amino peptidase acting on terminal peptide bonds with amine group, free amino group. Then dipeptide, dipeptides means two peptide bonds, such a uh, short peptides are digested by dipeptidase to convert into amino acids. Then sucrase, maltase, lactase. Remember, all these three you can collectively call them as disaccharides. Rhydases. You can call them as collectively disaccharides. Pancreatic lipase can also be called steapsin. Pancreatic lipase can also be called steapsin. Sorry. So, what I said is correct, right. So, the sucrase, maltase, so amino peptidase, the dipeptidase, So, dipeptidase, then sucrase, maltase, lactase, okay. Uh, what I just told is, pancreatic lipase can be called a steapsin. So, there is, you observe, pancreas also has lipase, intestine also has 
lipase. Intestinal juice is also containing lipase, right? But uh, pancreatic lipase is called a steapsin. So, what are the protein digesting enzymes in intestinal juice? Enterokinase, aminopeptidase, then dipeptidase. Dipeptidase. And carbohydrate digesting are acting on disaccharides like uh, sucrase, maltase, lactase. And also lipase, nucleotidase, nucleosidase acting on nucleic acids. Right. So, that is about. Uh, various uh, enzymes uh, present here right now let us see what are the digestion first uh, you take uh, digestion in stomach so first part we are dealing with uh, digestion in stomach so from here to here it is particularly the digestion in stomach. So, digestion in stomach. Pepsinogen is activated to pepsin by HCL. Proteins then digested by this pepsin into smaller proteins called peptones and producers. And uh, inactive enzyme proreneine is activated to renin. What is the use of this inactive protein digesting enzyme? So that they don't digest the lining of gut itself. Milk contains, remember milk has a sugar and protein. The milk protein is called casein, which can be initially digested by renin into paracasein. Under the influence of calcium, it becomes calcium paracasein and further digested by pepsin into peptones. In adults, you can't see this. Pepsin is only acting, but uh, renin is seen in infants, right? So, milk movement becomes slow and digestion is more effective. Now, coming to small intestine. In small intestine, food is getting digested by three digestive juices. What are they? Bile juice pancreatic juice, intestinal juice, bile juice, pancreatic juice, intestinal juice, right, these three. Then, so already some digestion has been done, but now what happens in next step, uh, the inactive or trypsinogen is converted to trypsin by enterokinase. Then chymotrypsinogen is also converted to active chymotrypsin by even trypsin. Some of these enzymes can show autocatalysis. If they are active, they make others active. Thus, all protein digestion, trypsin, chymotrypsin of pancreatic juice, carboxypeptidase also pancreatic juice, and aminopeptidase uh, of intestinal juice, dipeptidase, they convert into dipeptides and slowly uh, digested into amino acids. So, finally they get converted to amino acids. End products of protein digestion is amino acids. Now, carbohydrate, partially digested acidic food found in the stomach. Stomach, what is the main substance digested? Proteins. In buccal gravity, amylase or talent and digester. Uh, polysaccharides are starch. Only starch can get digested in buccal cavity. In stomach, significantly some amount of protein. Even 30% of starch can be digested by buccal cavity. But by the moment it enters stomach, uh, the action of salivary amylase is stopped because of acidic nature. Now, this amylase is present in what? the pancreatic juice. You know that pancreatic juice has amylase which converts polysaccharides into disaccharides. And these polysaccharides, so that same thing here continued. So proteins, dipeptides converted to amino acids. So like this, 
if you see uh, all pancreatic enzymes first it is like this so fats converted diglycerides into monoglycerides polysaccharides converted to disaccharides whereas dnas rnas convert them into nucleotides but later action by intestinal juice so enzymes are succinctic are converting into amino acid and it includes three disaccharides maltose is a disaccharide containing two sugar molecules glucose and glucose maltase will convert this lactase will convert lactose into glucose and galactose sucrose is converted to glucose and fructose sucrase is also called invertase nucleotides formed by the action of pancreatic juice dnas and rnas now subjected to nucleotidases which break down the phosphodiester bonds into nucleosides plus phosphate is getting uh, separated now sugars pentose five carbon sugars are separated in bases right suppose only fat digestion let us see now exclusively focus on fat digestion if you see only fat digestion you can take like this triglycerides first converted by bile bile contains bile salts what are the bile salts glycocolates and tarocolates of sodium and potassium they are called emulsified fats these emulsified fat droplets are acted by lipase into fatty acids and diglyceride again pancreatic lipase monoglyceride and glycerol or fatty acid like this either pancreatic or intestinal enzymes they can do this right but mostly digestion of fats stops at monoglyceride level rarely it goes up to suppose one triglyceride is digested what will happen one glycerol and three fatty acids can be formed so how is the absorption absorption of food material can take place by active and passive spending energy is active against concentration gradient absorption by <coughs> right so against concentration gradient if it is absorbed we call it a active transport otherwise you can call it passive transport passive transport can be simple diffusion or some special proteins are present which facilitate this so it is called facilitated diffusion if you read the book you get confusion glucose is absorbed by which method and means they give all the methods right now certain drugs are coming in contact with the mucosa of mouth and lower side of the tongue are absorbed into the blood capillaries drugs they may be getting absorbed uh, some sugars also right even uh, next uh, thing these are the things happening in mouth in stomach uh, water simple sugars alcohol absorption also takes place already in buccal cavity some digestion of sugars will take place most of the digestion and absorption is completed in small intestine principal organ the principal organ for absorption of nutrient also remember digestion is completed here and final products of digestion glucose fructose all monosaccharides fatty acids glycerol and protein end products of digestion are called amino acids they are all absorbed through mucosa into the blood stream or into the lymph fat soluble vitamins and uh, digested fats they are absorbed into the lymph long chain fatty acids how they are absorbed glucose can be absorbed by simple diffusion facilitated and active all three methods mostly active transport amino acids also like that long chain fatty acids they combine with the bile salts and form small droplets called micelles this micelles enter inside the intestinal cells inside the intestinal cells they form triglycerides coated with proteins they are called chylomicrons chylomicrons come out by exocytosis into lymph vessels like that it can be again stored in liver and adipose tissue so what is getting absorbed in large intestine minerals and drugs 
they can take place. Now, another important small topic uh, will end with that. That is calorific value. This is of two types. One is gross and physiological calorific value. The energy that is liberated by a substance in the body is physiological. For example, you have three important energy yielding substances. One is proteins, second carbohydrates, third one fats. Proteins yield around 4 kilocalories per gram. This is also for fats about 9 kilocalories. But here it will be 9.45 and around 4.1. 5.65 gross. But within the body, what is the energy? Physiological calorific value. So, deficiency of uh, proteins will create a disorder called quasior car. So, deficiency of proteins, uh, quasior car, and deficiency of energy means carbohydrates or protein. We can call it marasmus. In uh, up to three years, there is a chance of uh, developing quasure car. Suppose they may ask, uh, in spite of taking normal calorific intake, a person may develop quasure car. Any type of calories are not available, then marasmus.